Hey guys, my name is Matthew O, and I'm an environment artist at Ubisoft Massive. Recently I've been doing a lot of uh, cars in my personal work, and uh, in order to texture them I've been using Dedu. The reason I've been using Dedu is because I find uh, Dedu is really quick to get nice texture results, and when I'm working on my cars I want it to not take too long so I don't really get bored with them, so I try and keep all of my projects to uh, about a month at the most. Um, so I thought it'd be cool in this tutorial to show a um, uh, Myotech monster um, and I'll be looking at the Spitfire and trying to replicate that paint job along with some of the decal work on the, the monster just because I thought it'd be a pretty cool combination. So uh, I'm going to show you how I did that now. So uh, let's do this. Okay, so the first thing I really wanted to show uh, just before we kind of get into the, the real kind of nitty gritty of it is some kind of a very basic part of the way I'm working on my vehicles. So as you can see when you look at stuff like this the modeling isn't complex at all. Like I've, I've taken this basic shape and I've just kind of slammed it into this curve like it looks a bit terrible. Um, I don't know why it's lagging like that but whatever. Um, so yeah you can see it's not well modeled. I've not modeled it in, I've not unified it or anything like that. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I can rely on the rounded shader in Modo. So this is a really good example of where I'm using it. Um, so what you'll see is that as I work with uh, Dedu, I'm actually skipping out on normal maps. And um, normal maps are obviously pretty useful nowadays. So uh, I just wanted to show you this because this is kind of the reason why I'm skipping out normal maps. Because it, it gives errors basically when you can combine normal maps with the rounded shader at the same time. Uh, and as you can see, I'm kind of using Dedu for everything. So like all the metal work on the radiators and the engine and all the general kind of like scuffed up uh, painted metal and yeah, rusted old stuff. All of this is just all Dedu tiling over, even like tiling rubber on the tires and everything. Um, so that's kind of like why I'm going to show you Dedu, but this is the main reason why I'm not using normal maps and why my modeling looks a like yeah not good in a lot of places um, because if you're from outside of Modo then obviously this isn't going to be common knowledge to a lot of people although you can use it in things like key shot and stuff like that nowadays so if you look at this shape here when I render the car this is this shape here you have these super hard edges let me uh, get a slightly better angle you have these super hard edges all around here where it's modeled and obviously I've not bevelled it at all because it took like a split second to model this piece and not have to put the time into uh, control loops and smoothing and stuff like that uh, but obviously this looks terrible I wouldn't want to show this to anyone right now so then what I can do is if I actually take the material and I'll just bring the properties window over here so you can see it and I go to round edge width and I set this to half a centimeter then that's where the magic of the round edge shader comes in so now we get this super nice transition coming into the actual shape from the cylinder we have a really really nice rounded edge you could be clever and say okay now I want to take uh, all concave um, shading based on a, an occlusion map and apply a bump map or a normal well bump map for weld marks so you could make it look like it's welded and then the rounded shader would round it out and then you'd have welded marks based on a map over the top and then obviously convex edges like this wouldn't get it uh, but I don't kind of really push it that far because I don't need to because ultimately this detail is going to be like yeah this big at, at the most so there's just no real need but you can see that the entire engine like there's lots of detail and it's just built in this same kind of fashion so if you look here it's all just like cylinders pushed into cylinders and blah 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 it's not it's not uh, amazingly well modeled it's just quick and sloppy uh, which does exactly what I need for just rendering and then I use Dedu to get my nice texture work going and then yeah I get this super cool result so I'm obviously about to show you the Dedu section of it because this is a, a Dedu 
tutorial and I won't be kind of going into detail on how I'm doing stuff in Modo but I did want to explain why I'm not using normal maps and yeah the benefit to using Modo and why I'm using the round edge shader and blah 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 just as a as a as a brief explanation towards my workflow so now that I've shown you the round edge shader we should move on to actually setting up the base of the car ready for some camo so the first thing I want to do is obviously the bodywork of the car I kind of want the material in my render to look roughly how it should just using constants in the base shader um, before I take the materials bring them back in apply them on top uh, but just because it takes a lot less effort if it's already feeling like roughly the right roughness values and stuff like that so if we take take this shot again then I think this material is actually looking pretty awesome already because it just needs to be just a super basic yeah nice flat material with some decent roughness not too shiny or anything like that you can see the round edge shader kicking in on a lot of these edges and uh, yeah so this is basically going to be my base and I'm going to go and create a camo material to sit on top of this and then uh, yeah then we should start to get the results we want so all I should do is take this and obviously if it's going to be camo then we should make it like hot pink because what is more military than a hot pink car Yes, perfect. So obviously we're going to replace that pink in a minute, but yeah, beautiful. I mean, maybe we should call it done here. I don't know. What do you guys think? That's it. it feels alright. Anyway, yeah. So this is how I'm working. Basically, you're just going to take a take an area, apply a material to it, make sure the hot pink is hot pink. I've made it hot pink so I can see it's not affecting any of the rest of the car. Uh, make sure it's rendering well. Blah 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 it's reacting to lights and the uh, IBL in the scene and everything and then I say okay now I want to take this I want to go over to um, DDo, generate material save it all out and then I'll come back here in a second and start applying it so okay we should uh, go over and create a camo material and I would thank you very much DDo. thank you okay so you probably tell I've had a lot of caffeine this morning so now I have my blank scene, I have a cylinder sort of semi-lit uh, from my last uh, thing I worked on. So what I want to do is show basically why I'm using DDo. So I am not a good texturist. I can obviously go into Photoshop, I can take materials, slap them together, stuff like that and get good de uh, like basic stuff. But um, yeah, I'm not one to spend a large amount of time being a genius and procedurally generating crazy materials. So what I love is that I can sit and design my car, model it all up, get all the detail into it, and then when I'm ready to present it nicely, I can come into DDo and I have this huge library of sick materials. So if I wanted my car to be made of painted concrete, or if I want it to be lacquered wood, or if I wanted it to be synthetic cloth or military plastic, whatever that is, um, then yeah, I have all this like crazy stuff. I could be bone, alien skin, I could do an alien skin car. I mean, that looks sick. Look at that. Um, okay, so for me, what I want to do is I would like to go to military metal, and that sounds like a music genre. And what I want to do is take one of these camouflage materials and use one of these as the base to my Spitfire camouflage. So as you can see here, although they have these kind of pre-built materials, they have plenty of kind of um, procedural things or texture work lying on top based on procedural masks that are generated from the curvature or the normal or the AO of the mesh and all its bakes that have been plugged in. So as you can see, you have all this edge damage and stuff like that. And then on here, it might be slightly different because it might be chipped because it's looking at edges and then tiling a mask through it. And this is one of the things I really like about DDo. 
So you're also not limited to the textures that are coming in. As you can see, this one is all different kinds of greens, and then this one down here is the exact same camouflage, except it's using whites and grays. So you could easily take this crazy camouflage that makes no sense and make it grays, whites, blacks, make it digital camouflage, and yeah, off you go. So I'm gonna take this jungle tank armor as my base, because I think it looks badass. And I'm going to watch these bars work a lot faster than I would. And I'm just going to hit this little refresh button down here. Because that will refresh 3D. You don't need to do that all the time. It's just probably because it was already sitting open from before. So right now when I look at this, obviously it was called Jungle Camo. So it looks like Jungle Camo with a little man dancing with, a little, with some sort of plate on his head. And some deer antlers built in. And then... The, the kind of faded look and the kind of light dirt on it makes it look like fabric to me. So the first thing I want to do is take the dirt and I'm going to turn it, I'm going to make it super dark. Okay, this probably won't make much sense at the moment, but I think it will when I've kind of changed all my colors. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to turn off discoloration. I can just pronounce that in a really weird way. So I'm getting kind of more of a yeah gnarly kind of camo look now. The other thing I'm going to do quickly before I forget is I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to delete the normal map. That's because the rounded edge shader in Modo doesn't work well with normal maps. Uh, because they're trying so hard to actually do what a normal map does that they're kind of conflicting with the rounded shader. So what I tend to do instead is use the bump maps. So also you can work on the bump maps in uh, Dido as well, so I don't really have a problem with working like that. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to turn off this surface rust because the mask is almost completely black as no uh, bake information has been brought in to generate a mask. So I'll just turn that off as it's actually needed. There was a tiny, tiny bit of rust that just disappeared, but I mean, yeah, it's not something I need. The next thing I'm going to do is I'll turn off the dirt for a second just because it's a little bit distracting. Uh, I am going to adjust the amount of rust that you can see through the paint. So if you look over here, there's actually a, uh, a mask being generated. And what it's doing is it's blending multiple textures together to generate this this uh, rust. So if I change the scale on one, let's change this one to change this one to zero and break up some of that tiling. Maybe minus two. Nice one. Well, this one doesn't make too much difference anyway. But um, yeah, I don't think this will matter too much because it's going to become more subtle than this. Uh, so the main thing I want to do is bring a lot more white into this material because where there's light color there's there's camo paint and where there's dark color there's rust so maybe reduce the contrast slightly now pump it up actually yeah and I think that'll give me the result I want so then this will basically mean I have a lot more camo and a lot less rust because I don't want it to I want it to look like it's not being looked after too well over a couple of years but not that it's been sat in a in a junkyard for a really long time or a scrap yard as we call them in Britain so now you can obviously see that our little dancing man with a plate on his head is way, way more clear. So unfortunately for the dancing man and the antlers, there's there's so much uh, camo going on right now that it looks more like the small scale camo you would have on a, on, on a jacket or a pair of pants. So um, what I want to do is get rid of the smaller scale stuff so it looks more like the larger scale um, camo that you would have on a big vehicle or like I'm seeing in the reference on the Spitfire. So I can go into the camo folder. I'm just going to turn off beige and turn off dark green. So now we get a bit more like what I'm thinking. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is go down to my brown, my brown note, and I'm going to change this to more of a aquamarine dark green color and then we'll try and keep the saturation a bit high just because it'll look super cool in the render 
let me let me uh, just try and zoom in a little bit in Photoshop so we're not just looking at a huge gray screen with a tiny square in the middle and yeah I want a bit more blue in that yeah that looks pretty sick lovely oh yeah there we go okay nice okay so now I'm going to take the light green and I'm going to go for more of a slightly diarrhea brown that being a technical term for the color I'm about to use and what I want is not I'm just pointing at the screen I'm actually putting my finger on the screen right now as if you can see it so imagine this little eye this dropper is my finger so what I want is not too much contrast between the light light brown and the green because I want the decals at the end to pop a bit more so I don't want loads of contrast in the, the camouflage because also that will just kind of counteract the point of camouflage you kind of want everything to start to blend together as opposed to super conflicting colors and contrast levels so you actually just see something move more often than not um, and then now that I have a kind of a base that I actually think could work quite well I will turn my dirt back on yeah I think that'll look, that'll look cool maybe make it slightly darker and then I am also going to go into my bump map as you can see right now it's basically completely flat grey I'm going to take my dirt and I'm going to increase it slightly so it's like shit sitting on top of the material and then I'm going to not actual poop and then I'm going to take the rust and I'm going to make that a bit darker not too dark because I don't want like loads of light information being created by this material and it just generally creates a little bit of of uh, yeah surface detail across the material and then I will save that because I think this looks effing glorious and as you can see it's only taken a couple of minutes and I'm gonna hit my exports button it's already set up to the right location I'm gonna change this to camo and then I'm gonna do export all materials and then we are going to go and see what it looks like in Modo. Okay, so the next step is obviously to take this super hot sexy pink car and to apply the camo we just generated to the pink. So the the whole car is kind of like a combination or, or the bodywork is a combination of just uh, subdivision modeling and yeah, as you can see it's just subdivided using round edge shader for hard edges like this and then I've done a, an Atlas UV on it and then I've set my Atlas UV to 512 uh, pixels per meter uh, aspect ratio so that we're working at the same aspect ratio as what I was thinking and then I can scale up and down based on um, what I think looks good and because we worked at 1024 per meter in the document that means it worked nicely so the first thing I'm going to do is get up a render of the side of the car make it a bit smaller so it's a bit quicker and we just want to bring in get to the side of the vehicle like this and get a nice glancing angle and obviously right now the specular is way high on the vehicle so even though it's not very glossy you're getting like large bright highlights so the first thing I want to do is apply the specular then I want to apply my bump map uh, just make sure everything feels like it's kind of the material feels right and then I want to apply my uh, color after that so because obviously the color is camo so it's going to be super distracting so the first thing I'm going to do is apply my uh, specular so obviously this looks way more how you would expect the material of a tank or something like that with to act and then you have rust and dirt coming down it that's obviously got a lot less specular than the uh, rest of the vehicle so it's much rougher uh, okay so yeah that looks pretty cool and then the next thing I'll do is bring in my bump so we'll apply that yeah that looks pretty cool so obviously that might feel quite noisy and a bit too much up close but I think that will read really well at a distance 
um, because if we get all this kind of like macro detail here, then it will just give a, a, quite a kind of high level of fidelity to the, the vehicle on, as a whole when you have a render of the whole car at once. And it's small enough that it will kind of disappear into the texture work. It won't kind of destroy your uh, kind of level of noise ratio across the vehicle. Um, so it won't make it like a yeah a complete mess. So I think I think that will feel really, that I mean that looks really cool like that already. And then uh, then I apply my diffuse. So this actually may be not um, contrasty enough. Actually no, that's that that feels really cool. So I think the problem is is that dirt is really really strong. Um, the rust I'm not noticing so much, but yeah, I think that looks I think it looks pretty good right off the bat to be honest. I mean we could make changes uh which you guys know how to do as you've seen me making changes just now because um, all I would be making changes to is color or specular and things like that and uh bump values, but this feels pretty good, so what I'll do is if I just zoom out a little bit. I think it might be slightly too glossy, so I think it might be have slightly too much spec in the texture, and then I think uh, I need to actually turn down the dirt a little bit because it's just a bit strong. Because uh, in a minute, what I'll do is I'll turn on some decals that I've kind of uh, built to look like the Spitfires decals, and what I want is for them to get the center of attention and not for all this kind of crazy noise to take away from that. So I'll just turn off the render quickly and I'm just going to go over to not that, I'm going to go over to Photoshop and uh, I'm just going to go to dirt and turn the opacity down on the dirt. Is it doing it? Yeah, okay, so I want that probably at like, I don't want it to go away, so I probably want it around 75%. That's enough. And uh, yeah, my specular on the actual camo felt a little bit too high. I have been turning it up a little bit. It's not exactly what you would get from thingy, so that's my mistake. So I'll go into paint and I'll just bring these down so they're not too crazy. Yeah, something like that. I have a slight difference. Save that. And I have a feeling this is probably going to be enough, and that's all the iteration I need to do. Pop back over to Demodo, reload my images. I think that reloaded. Yeah, and then let's have a look again. Yeah, I think that looks awesome. I mean, it's obviously still a little bit noisy. I can keep adjusting this before I'm finished, but I think that looks really nice. And it feels quite true to the, to the Spitfire. I mean, I'm not going exactly the same because I want you to see this kind of cool camo patterns. I could obviously move the UVs around because it's a tiling texture to adjust where I want the uh, camo patterns and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, the actual texture work looks good and then the only other thing I want to do is I will turn on a my other mesh object which is just some floating uh, geometry that is just a pilot's name and uh, a um, I mean an R ring a lot uh, and then this is the RF circle on the side of the vehicle so now if I take a look it just sits over the top, it's not got shadow casting turned off or anything like that. Then obviously these kind of want to pull attention a bit more. So you don't want to have too much contrast in the camouflage because you want the contrast from the white to kind of draw the eye more than the material. Yeah, I think it looks cool. I think the, the dirt can maybe still come down a little bit, but I can mess with that. Um, you can see the decals are super basic. They're just uh, textures with an alpha that I've built in Photoshop and then UV to a plane and floated the plane. So there's nothing complex going on there. All of the textures on the car, like uh, this, um, let's make it a little bit bigger. All the textures on the car, like this uh, tire, is just 
uh, Didu, um, or the same with all the kind of like the the metals, dirty, rusty materials, the camo, everything. It's all just uh, tiling Didu materials that I've set up, brought in, applied, made sure I'm happy with it, moved on. So the texturing work I did on the original Low Tech Monster probably took about an hour, and then I've taken uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes to apply this camo. So the only other thing I'm going to do is that this framework that OTEC Industries is sitting on right now is completely flat grey with just the rounded shader turned on and that's all it's doing. So I'm going to create one more really boring material for that one that's just going to be paint with some chipped away bits on it. Uh, just to show my process again really quickly. So if you want to, you can just skip that part of the video because you've seen me do it with the camo. Uh, and a lot of you probably understand this stuff super easily because it's it's probably really really surprising how uh, obvious the way I'm building this car is so um, but if you are interested in just seeing one more then you can watch that and then just after that I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to show how I composite my ambient occlusion bake and my just general diffuse bake of the car together add vignette and stuff like that and then I how that's my finished image and I'll, and I'll move on so uh, if you want to watch that, then I'll just go and do another uh, quite boring material right now. And then uh, we'll move on to the final Photoshop. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is just create a nice uh, basic green metal material for the, um, for the framework. So what I could do is just turn off the brown from this and then just use that material and it would match but what I want to do is just generate a whole new material really quickly that might have some of its own kind of like problems as I generate it so that you can see how I'm working so what I'm going to do again is I'm going to first I'm going to change this to frame so I don't forget later and then I am going to create a new smart material I'm going to go to metals so there's obviously loads of metals I'm probably just going to be painted because obviously we don't want camo and stuff like that and there's loads of choice I don't want this kind of like 3d pattern or you kind of have to use your imagination as you work like what imagine the colors are different and you've changed uh, masks and all sorts so I think this painted machine looks like it gave me a really nice result so I'll take that one and I think the first thing I need to do is actually copy the green across from the other material. So I'll go back to my tank armor and I'm just going to go into this green, copy this code and go into my painted machine and I'm just going to change it over. So the first thing you'll notice is that my texture density is so high that the damage is actually tiling like crazy and it's really small. So I'm going to change the, the mask for how much uh, paint is sitting over the top. So this is quite easy because I just want to change the scale of the mask. So I obviously want like a much larger scale, so something more like that. And then, because it combines with the second mask, uh, I could check and see if this makes much difference to it. It doesn't look like it does really. But this is just basically just like uh, metal coming through. Maybe I want to try and turn the contrast down a little bit, so I just get a little bit more the mid ground between things so that looks like what I'm doing is I'm looking at this right hand viewport more than the center because you can kind of see that it's the contrast on them is slightly different I, I noticed that the one on the right I tend to tends to give me more accurate results um, so I'm just going to accept that so as you can see there's more metal coming through it feels like a, a better scale and then what I want to do is my dirt has a black AO right now and I do want dirt because uh, obviously I don't want it to be nice and clean so um, I'm just going to go and adjust the mask for that so because we've not brought in bakes and meshes and stuff like that it has a very basic kind of mask going on right now so what we could do is just change the scale like we did on the last one um, but it's not uh, I don't know, there it is. Um, but it's there's not a lot going on. So what I'm going to do is if I click on this load texture, 
I'm actually going to load this concrete texture because that will give me loads of information. And I'm going to pull down the contrast on it and bring the brightness way up. And then I'll scale it up. I just zoomed. Oh, that's in here. Um, and yeah, I'll scale it as well. So how do I scale? Where is it? Scale. So if I scale that up one, and that'll give me some large scale information. Uh, I have loads, like not a lot of contrast. And then I'll turn the brightness down a little bit more. Yeah, so I mean that's a, it's a little bit crazy, but it just means that you'll get to see a lot of information. So now what I have is what looks like kind of weird metal coming through or something. So I'm going to make it quite light because I'm kind of imagining like it's damaged primer. So I'm going to kind of go like this kind of color. And then I'm going to, oh yeah, no, that's a bit too contrasty. Something a bit more like this, I think. Uh, but the specular was quite high on that, so I might be wrong at the moment. So I'm going to take the specular, I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. Uh, and then the steel base, I'll leave that where it is. And I'm going to bring this up very slightly because it was a little bit higher on the camo. And then I am going to go back into, I'm kind of ignoring the gloss values because they're, they're kind of happening in Modo already. Uh, so then the dirt kind of looks okay. And then the bump, I'm actually going to make it so that the, the dirt is sitting slightly above. No, so I want to go slightly below because I kind of want it to look a bit like primer. And then the scuffs, I'll make that quite dark so it feels like kind of deep scratches. Okay, uh, and that is pretty much it. I mean, the they're still very contrasty, so I'll just kind of go. I don't want it to be too crazy. Yeah, we'll see how that looks. I think the gloss values are kind of like making stuff look a bit, a bit crazy at the moment. Yeah, I think that'll. I think it'll look good when it's in Modo. If we get them quite close, then you'll you get a more accurate representation of what it will look like. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is save the project. Uh, this probably won't look great right away, so then uh, we'll, we can iterate on that and export the material, and then we'll just go across to Modo, and so. Right, okay, so I have my material, which is if I click on materials, it chooses them in the shader editor. So uh, if I click on this one, I have my frame material, I create a group, so I'm just going to add a layer, image map, load image, and I'm going to go to my texture work and grab these three, or just this one for now, I guess. Um, so that'll be my diffuse color. No, that's reflect. So I'm going to just set that as specular amount. We can have a look at how that looks. So we don't want anything too crazy because it's just going to end up being green bars anyway. So I'm not too worried about getting it super accurate. I mean, yeah, it looks cool. It looks like a similar kind of spec value. And you can see a little bit of change here and there. So then I'm going to bring in our bump. We'll work in the same order as before. So we'll do frame bump. Oh, yeah, that's diffuse color. So we should do surface shading bump. That will just give us a little bit of bump information here and there. a little bit around certain areas and then um, I'm going to bring in the diffuse 
And we'll leave that as diffuse color because that feels fine. Yep, and that's pretty much it. So if we zoom out and look at the car, we should just kind of disappear into the design because it's just green posts with not a lot going on. And that's what 95% of materials on the on the car are. They're just nice DD materials just quickly chucked together very quickly. And then occasionally a nice slightly more complex one like this camo. And then that's it basically. So now I will go into Photoshop and show how I can composite the final image. Okay. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is just show quickly how I'm putting my final images together. So the first thing I do is I take my, my render at the end and I stick that in Photoshop and I take my AO, stick that in Photoshop and all I'm going to do is I'll turn my AO off for now. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this and I'm going to do a sharpen uh, by about 40% just to sharpen it up slightly. Uh, you could probably get the same result out of just like turning up your render settings, but it's just it's going to add more time, which I don't want. So you can see it's only a very small difference, but it just brings a little bit of detail out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to offset it slightly. And I'm going to turn off the green and blue channel to create a little bit of uh, chromatic aberration. Some people don't like this, so if you don't like it, don't do it. But I quite like adding a little bit of this. Uh, so you can see there's a small amount uh, on the tires, and so it's uh, really, really subtle. And then I'm gonna mask it all out, basically. So I'm gonna mask it all out so it's gone. And then I'm gonna bring a tiny, tiny amount of it back in. Because, yeah, no one likes loads of chromatic aberration. I'm going to bring in a little bit around the tires, a little bit over this top bit here and a bit across the top of the engine. And that's it, because I don't want any on the actual detail you're looking at, just only on the slight little bit on the silhouette. It just makes it look like there's a slight imperfection from the uh, from the actual camera lens. So the next thing I do is with the AO is I'll multiply that and I'll stick it around 65%. It might be too high, but we'll find out in a second. And then I'll duplicate that, and I'll overlay at about 15%. So as you can see, it just makes some of the shapes pop out very slightly, and obviously stops it from feeling too dark. The AO just does AOE stuff. So maybe I'll turn that down a little bit. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll create a solid color, fill up the entire thing, and then delete my image. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, set my feather to 100%, or maybe 100 will be fine. Sometimes it's 150, and I'll have a, an elliptical marquee, and I will just select from just outside of the image to just over the other side over here. Select my mask, and then fill that marquee with black. So I have a, a very subtle vignette. I'll turn that down to 60%-ish, just because it brings a little bit, it brings your eyes towards the center of the image slightly. And then the last thing is that you get this banding in the vignette. So I just want to go into the, I, while I have the mask selected, I just want to go to filter, noise, add noise, and that'll just bring just enough noise in that it will stop the banding or most of it. And then yeah, and that's my final image. So uh, yeah, that's it. I hope this is helpful. And uh, thank you, Quixel guys, for asking me to do a tutorial. And thank you for watching. Cheers. Bye.